be linked when you add them together you know you're talking about a majority of people are getting good at measuring and monetizing their apis so, super interesting to see um and then the next one is that that you know there's still a portion there that are just doing no monetization which is really understandable when you've got a lot of internal api programs where you're serving other people you can see indirect um billing plays a really small role and i just i'll touch on the monetization thing because I think for API programs, your path to monetization, API platforms is selfishly how we can all justify more budget, but, but honestly, it's how you win, right? Like monetization is how you win for the, for the business in, in hard dollar terms. The next kind of area that I wanna draw some insights out is around the organization. So you can see the typical API team design up there uh, we've got, what was really interesting is, is there's a lot of cross-functional teams around and they say they're empowered with, and they've got, we kind of measured that really rough, but like two thirds had a decision maker in their team who could make decisions about their API platform and their a APIs. I don't know if that matches with anecdotal reality. So that it's like, again, you've always got these interesting things come out of surveys like that, but you can see developers are big, um, testers in the team, it was really good to see product managers up there, up high in the team, uh, security people in the team, getting a bit of sense of what a team looks like. The, the other fascinating thing to me is I'm a huge believer in small teams get, that can get disruptive outcomes. It's small teams that really drive things and this um, team size factor hit home, whether you've got teams of teams, but small teams are the ones that get outcomes. This is kind of validating for my view of the world. The re one of the really interesting data points that we saw, we had a talk on earlier around APIs as products. And a lot of people say APIs are a core product to them, but you know you could see before, a lot of people aren't putting product managers in the team, which is something that I think as a bit of a, as an industry, as a, as a part of the industry, we've got to work on fixing because product and the product lens around APIs is, is so vital. We've seen it work so well in digital, in web, in uh, mobile, that uh, you know, API is no different. And uh, yeah, so it's just a really good one to call out, like just you know, putting the money where the mouth is, investing where you need to, invest in product. So, so I'm gonna to touch on security now. In security, there was a bit of overconfidence and what do I mean by that? Well, in security, 50% of people so they were sophisticated when we asked them. We, one of the first questions was just, you know, how mature, how sophisticated are you? A lot of people said yes. But then when we asked them about specific, and I think I'm probably guilty of overconfidence in a lot of things, then when we asked them about very specific practices like observability or uh, practices around logging and security around logging, it then, inver it then inverted, right? So what, basically we've got this thing of overconfidence in security and it's not, it's not limited to security alone, but you can see the over, overconfidence there. The other interesting thing that we kind of drew out in, in one of the questions was the different perspective of engineers, developers versus managers. And that's around velocity versus security. So you can see here, we asked uh, engineers what they thought was important when it came to security. And we also asked managers what they thought was important when it came to security. And you can see the big discrepancy around uh, where the focus was, whether it was velocity and, and that kind of thing. So you can see some differences there. I'm gonna cover off on technology now. So, when it came to platforms, we said, what technology does your organization currently use as an API platform? And this is one of the most fascinating kind of answers to look at. You can see AWS way out in the lead. Uh, you can see Azure, Apogee up there. What's really interesting is where you start to see Postman factoring up there. Uh, I know the Postman team will tell me they're an API platform now, uh, but you can see that what, what was really interesting is that 
when you, we looked at mature versus immature usage, so we classified mature usage as people that responded saying they had a development portal, they used analysis tools, they had an analysis engine, they had infrastructure tooling, you know, all the things that kind of go into your, let's say, Gartner defined a full lifecycle API platform. When we asked them about those things and whether they were there, what we saw was um, a bit of a change and actually quite a significant change. So you can see mature with, if you take Apogee, for example, with mature organizations, there's that doubling of, of, the, plat of the platform. So people that are using all, of, all the kind of features, benefits an API platform brings or, and making use of them, you can see that doubling. And interestingly, again, like Postman really kind of comes up further th up the rank as well. And my, my thinking on Postman is really mature teams are using the, the workbooks around Postman to share with each other, um, distribute with each other, they're using it in tests. So again, it kind of changes where it goes. AWS is an interesting one to see up there because as a, as a, pl as a platform, it doesn't out of the box, so to speak, provide a lot of the things that we would call, again, using like a Gartner to define what's an API platform. Uh, you would say it doesn't provide all of those and you need something else with it, but it does provide, if you think about What's interesting is like there's the way maybe the industry and and uh, vendors might talk about their products, and then there's how uh, the actual people building API platforms and products think about what they're doing. And so we we just you know we're just asking as as researchers here we're just asking questions. And so it's it's really interesting to me that when we asked all these people what do you use in your API platform and what is an API platform, um, one sec. Uh, we got like things in there and results that we weren't expecting so much. And I think that's really actually a really interesting and good thing because we can really, under, like it, it, how people think about something, whether they're right or wrong when it comes to a word, people's perception of it is actually what matters at the end of the day, not, not what, how, me, how we may want to define something and push it on them. So I think it's really important to pay attention to this. And I think the thing that, you know, AWS as you are might feature up there highly is because yeah, I'm building APIs, I'm deploying some lambdas and I can like, you know, I, I was an engineer for a while, like if I deploy a lambda with some code, that's an API and I've, I've built an, I might think I've built an API platform, especially I'm not aware of the other things, but that, that's how I might think. So this was like a really interesting one. There was a question, do you want to jump up and data here on the left, is it self-contributed uh, or is it selected from a, uh, a list? Because if you don't have AWS uh, API Gateway, then that's going to create an issue. Yeah, it was, it was a, we had like a long list of things that you could, you could tick from and, and there are some like part of it in, in seeing the results like, yeah, do you have AWS in the, AW, in the API Gateway, do you have GCP? But I think, um, I don't know enough about the full length of all the details of the response, uh, but it's a good, it's a, definitely a good question. So technology used, another super interesting one. Uh, RESTful was way up the top. You can get, I don't know, everyone likes seeing what everyone else is using, so this is just an interesting data point. Um, Event-driven stuff's up there. GraphQL, for all the noise, is still only about a third of what people are actually doing. And there's some other like good kind of modernization patterns, like a back-end for front-end, Strangler pattern featured up there as well, which is interesting. So we just asked frameworks, give it, do, tick some boxes. That's like the the insights that I wanted to draw out today. Uh, there's going to be plenty more in the final report. I've got the, if you want to grab the report, you can scan, you can go to the link. The, the, the trade that we're making is you get the report if you fill out the survey. <laughs> It's, not, it's actually quite good, right? Put it in, we'll, we'll build out the survey and we'll be releasing the report in about a, a month's time. So I'd love everyone to go and fill out the report. I think the information is super useful. It's definitely been insightful for me. Um, I'll throw it out to, to any questions people have got. I'll take the second one. <laughs> have you done a, 
uh, like a longitudinal study on the maturity you see in the ecosystem from an API point of view? And have you contrasted what you've learned so far from any other ecosystem? And the third part of the question is, what do you see as some of the next steps in that ecosystem from a, uh, from a skills and knowledge point of view? Yeah, yeah, it's a, a really good question. I'll try and, try and tackle them. So in terms of the longitudinal, it was actually a big um, reason for doing the survey, and we're going to do it again next year. I, I, I watched something like this be done in some other spaces, and it starts to become really interesting. So this time next year, API days, we'll have uh, the 2023 version of the survey, and we'll be able to hopefully share some of those longitudinal insights around how things are shifting and, and how it's changing. In a final report, we're also going to be using um, some of the other studies that have been done and contrasting like our results with them so everyone can compare and, and get a sense of it. Uh, in terms of skills, et cetera, there is a, we did have a section on skills. What are the skills people need now? What do they think they need ongoing? You can get a sense if I just, if I can flick back. Like this starts to get a sense at least of the, on the technical side as to the kinds of skills that are needed and the roles one that I presented earlier can start to give you a sense, but we've also got a more specific one that goes into what languages or uh, what platforms. There's a bit of that there, but a, a bit more around that. Any other questions? Yeah. How do, you, how do you see us contributing to this as uh, the API community? Yeah, oh, how, how can you contribute? Yeah. By filling out the survey. Yeah. That's the question. How can you contribute? Now, honestly, it'd be awesome because it would be fantastic to be able to do... The, the dream is to do the longitudinal stuff where next year we can do another update where we've got 500 responses, 1,000 responses, and to keep on building out the, the scale of the survey so we can do comparisons provide more insights, because at least looking through hopefully some of the insights I've shared, you've maybe seen some really interesting perspectives there. There's kind of a load more in the, in the longer form report that I would hope everyone finds really useful. I definitely know in my, in my day job of helping people build API platforms, working with all different uh, companies from government through to startups, that you often get, a, I often get asked, like, what's, what are other people doing? Do they have this problem? Um, what, how are other people responding to this? What should this look like? What does best practice look like? So it's really good being able to draw on data like this, um, especially in the Australian context, because often Australian organisations kind of might go like, yeah, that's well and good, they're doing that in Silicon Valley, but I'm an insurer based in uh, Melbourne. And so... <laughs> Uh, and I might think differently and operate differently. So I think having the survey really helps all of us kind of go back and be able to say, well, this is what others are doing. This is what your peers are doing. This is what organizations like you are doing. Um, so I think that the, the way you can contribute, please, please fill it out. We'll be putting on some drinks and releasing the report so you might get some drinks and, and some snacks out of it as well. Yeah. Do that as well? uh, yeah, like do, we, within a single organization. Yeah, yeah you, we, we could easily take the same survey. Okay. We, yeah, we've got, we've got um, you, could, you could benchmark against it. Again, we'll be releasing like all the questions that we asked, all the responses. So it'll be kind of open source in that way. We'll be gi just giving it away. That's why we brought sponsors on so we didn't have to charge for the report or anything. Um, the sponsors and, and Terum have been able to fund it. So we'll be giving that away. You can use it. Uh, you could use it to benchmark an organization against it. You could use it to see where you fit. Excellent. Yeah. Thank you. No worries. Thank you, everyone.